So one of our Discord members just pointed out this Facebook page, Gemini AI, which is basically the name for Google's AI platform. It's ChatGPT competitor. And as you can see, it has 290 thousand followers. It says they're based in Los Angeles, California. But if we take a look at their latest post, which seems to have a screenshot of Google's actual event, it has a link, which also is on a Google domain. But I'm pretty sure if we click on it, we are going to get infected by malware. And this is how bad things have gotten. You don't need malware infrastructure anymore. You can just use this amazing infrastructure provided by major corporations like Amazon and Google. And for the most part, they seem to be able to get away with it. I mean, this has been up for a very long time and it's still working. Now we're going to head on to a virtual machine and we're actually going to visit this link and see what kind of malware we get hit by. But I just want to focus on the post itself and show you even posts that look very legitimate like this one with a lot of comments, shares, normally all the things you would expect from a legitimate source can still be a malicious listing. So we're just gonna copy this link. Here goes nothing. And it looks like we're downloading a RAR file of 395 kilobytes. That doesn't look suspicious at all. I'm pretty sure this is password protected in order to avoid being scanned. So we're going to go ahead and copy the password, which is this installation code, which supposedly gives you one year free license to use this really advanced AI software from Google. <laughs> as if something like that existed. So now I've opened up uh, this RAR file and we're going to look at the folder and the file that's inside of it. Looks like it's a .msi and if we extract it, it's gonna ask for the password. These things are always password protected. So in 2024, somebody gives you a password protected archive, just don't open it. Especially if it's an installer, there's no reason to password protect it really. Now, another thing about MSI files is that it's very easy to create these templated setup applications that again will evade scanners because the installation itself and the installer is not malicious, but it's going to run a very short tool or command that is going to steal all of your credentials, send it to a remote server, and the rest of the application does nothing. It's gonna happen so fast that you're not even gonna see it if you're not careful. It's kind of like fallless malware if you remember that. Just gonna try to set up my process explorer so maybe we can catch a quick glimpse of it as it's happening. So again, at the moment, I'm gonna try to pin this so we can see the process view on the right. But as you can see, this particular installer not detected on Vars Total because as I suspect, the installer itself is not malicious. It's gonna be a simple command that runs at the end of the installer. That's the real deal. And there you go, boom, command lines. Something happens and then we redirect it to Copilot. <laughs> I like the insult to Google here. So even the malware pretending to be Google's AI is redirecting you to Microsoft's AI because they thought that would be more convincing, I guess. But that little command line script that you just saw execute before the installation completed, and by that I mean fake installation, it didn't really install anything. But that little two second command line is supposed to steal our credentials. So if I was logged into Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, Amazon, PayPal, whatever, it would grab those credentials from my stored cookies on the system and then send it off to the attackers and my accounts would get hacked. And just to show you where the data comes from. So you've got this folder called app data on your computer. You're gonna find local roaming. And if you go into the Microsoft folder, there's gonna be edge. Now this is gonna be different depending on your browser, but under user data, we're gonna have default and then network. And in this folder, you have a couple of files. So you've got cookies and then cookies TMP. And if we open one of these, just simply with notepad, 
as you can see, it stores a lot of information about the websites we visit. Some of it may be encoded, Base64, protected by the system, but there are ways to get around that. And what a lot of these info stealers do is they basically scrape the information off of these files or use other credential dumping techniques. Just good to know. There's literally a file on your computer that tells the website, hey, I'm currently authorized to access this website. We like to think the internet is magic, but at the end of day, it's all files and folders on some computer somewhere. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a um, bird's eye view of what is happening. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to upload this particular installer to Vars Toll, and guess what? It is actually detected by 33 engines. Funnily enough though, it wasn't detected by Windows Defender on the system nor was it flagged by Varistool when I actually ran it. This malware came from Google Drive from a Facebook post. So by no means are these online platforms fully secure. At the end of the day, it is code running on a physical system, whether it's on your system, whether it's on Google's system. And I like to present that perspective so people don't forget it. With all of this modern cloud and AI thinking, which is so abstracted out from the reality of what computers do. So hopefully this video was informative if you come across anything really interesting that you would like to warn other users about, feel free to join our Discord and drop it as a suggestion. Don't forget to like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. One of the most common ways people get hacked is through weak or reused usernames and passwords. And now I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of how someone can hack you using a simple brute force attack. And for this, we're using our sponsor for today's video, Pentest Tools which gives you a quick and easy way of testing the security of any website. You just need to enter the website you want to target. We're using their password auditor feature. We're going to specify some custom ports and we're only going to scan for HTTP and RDP or remote desktop protocol interfaces. Now this is the fun part. What word list do we want to use? So we're going to pick some easy usernames and passwords. So things like rude administrator, stuff like that. And we're going to try to brute force it. I'm going to say I'm authorized to scan the target. Don't do anything illegal. But now our scan is running and we're already finding open ports. And right now we're basically conducting what is a brute force attack, put in different usernames and passwords and see if something works. And boom, that didn't take long because the username is administrator and the password is also administrator. So if you have default credentials like this on any of your websites or your mail domains, a brute force attack like this could give a hacker your username and password and then they can hack into your account, no problem. Funny thing is, it even shows us a screenshot. Pentest Tools has a variety of web security tools to allow you to test your own website security to prevent exactly this kind of thing from happening. And you can access all of these tools to test your own website security or learn about cybersecurity by signing up using link in description. As you can tell, it's a very easy to manage UI and I've been quite surprised by the efficiency of it. So do check them out using the link in description. Thank you all so much for watching this this is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.